so far so good. What about trying it for the web? What we're going to do first of all is to save our file to the correct directory for the uh, local web server to locate it. And you'll need to change the path to suit wherever you installed your local web server software. You're looking at putting your Perl scripts onto a remote host and testing them through there. Then we're going to be looking at the ways to do that in the next movie. For now, let's save that into the CGI bin directory under the document root and we're going to call it hello.cgi this time. So we've saved our file and now let's move over to our web browser and I'm using Mozilla but any web browser is the same and we're going to try to run that exact same file. Now this is not going to work. I want to highlight the difference here between running scripts from the command line and running them through the browser and making your request to the server. When we ask for hello.cgi we get an internal server error and because of the way that uh, the web server in Perl have been set up the error is saved off to a log file somewhere. So let's go back to our script and see what could be causing the problem. Our single command here simply prints hello world. What we need to add is another line to tell, first of all, to tell the web server what kind of content it's delivering to the browser. So just type this line in exactly as I've written it. All the hyphens, colons, spaces and slashes the right way and essentially this is the line we won't look ex exactly in too much detail about mime headers and so on but this is a line that will tell the web server what kind of content it's serving. You'll notice one other thing about our script we've also changed the extension of it we've called it hello.cgi this is because we're not using the Windows file association to process the script as a Perl script. What we, what we need to do instead is we need to include a line right at the very very top of this script to make sure that when the web server finds a script and tries to read it, it knows that it's a file that needs to be run through the Perl executable. So this is known as the shebang line, a hash followed by an exclamation mark or a bang and then we need to put in a complete path to wherever it was that we installed the Perl executable. In this case I installed it under the directory where I installed Perl, it's in binary binary directory or bin and it's perl.exe again because we're running on a Windows system. So let's return now to our web browser and try again. Success We've put the hello world output through the web server and back to the browser. Once again, we're not going to worry too much about the technicalities of what those lines mean or what they're doing, but for now it's enough just to get the script up and running.